what's up everyone thank you so much for tuning in and if you're new welcome to my channel my name is Preeti Rao and I am both a real estate broker and a mortgage broker for close to 20 years in my last video I spoke about what you need to be aware of as a first-time home buyer when you're putting in an offer today I'm going to cover the major components of that particular offer but first make sure to like share tap the bell icon hit the subscription button it gets me motivated to keep you up to date with everything real estate Now there are four components to an offer the price the conditions the closing date and finally all the inclusions the most obvious is going to be the price what you are willing to offer the seller as the purchase price if it's a really hot market you might be offering above the asking but if it's a buyer's market like what we are in today you probably have an opportunity to get a price below the asking now unless you're in an insane crazy buyer's market you're going to be writing what's called as a conditional offer Basically, you are telling the seller, I will buy your house as long as the following things are satisfactory to me as the buyer. These will be things like getting approved for a mortgage or doing the inspection and any other additional items you need to do as part of your due diligence to make sure that this house is what you think it is and it's still the right house for you. Also, you're going to put a timeline on these conditions as well, saying that I'm going to have all of this work done in a set number of days. On every listing, there's going to be a date from the seller that is the ideal possession day for them. They might have a specific date, so let's say some something like 30 days or 90 days. This is an area that you can use as a negotiation tool or an advantage when writing an offer because if you can meet the seller's ideal possession date, well, that's one thing less that you need to fight about. The last major component of an offer is what you want to include with the purchase of that house. So if you want things like the curtains or the chandelier or the appliances, you have to ask for that as part of your offer. A general rule of thumb to work by is that if it is attached to the property or attached to the land that the property is on, it's coming with that property as part of the purchase. You don't have to ask for it independently, but appliances, you'll have to ask for them as part of your offer, unless it is specifically mentioned as an exempt on the listing. Now you have written the offer and congratulations, it's all accepted, but it's not firm yet. Here comes step number three, getting the house inspected. And these inspections are going to be one of those conditions that you put in the offer. The kind of inspection you need to do will depend on what type of a property you're buying. Always ask your agent what types of inspections you need to get done as part of this purchase because there may be specific things in your market that don't come as part of a home inspection that need to be done in addition. For example, if your home comes with well and septic, then that is not part of the normal inspection. It's separate altogether. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. The day of the inspection is going to be kind of a negative day. You're going to feel pretty bummed out thinking the house you want to buy is a piece of Oh no! Trust me, it's not. You've paid the home inspector to tell you all the bad things about the house. They are not there to tell you about all the good things in the house. So just understand, when you sit down with that inspector, everything they're telling you is going to be bad news. Take a day to kind of digest that information. Go back and look at it again. Use the 24-hour rule. Let everything settle. There's also no such thing as an absolute red flag that you must walk away from the situation because it's all about your level level of tolerance and what comes up in that inspection. Most of the times you can get things fixed or repaired if you need to do so. If it's a major fix, go back and negotiate with the seller and say we'd like the price reduction or we'd like this fixed before the possession date. Then parallelly, you also need to start working on the finance, getting that approved along with the inspection being done. Once you are approved and the inspection is good, then you need to notify the seller that your conditions have now been satisfied. This is all going to be done in writing before this set deadline date. Once you have done that, that means the deal is now firm. You cannot back out and the house is officially yours. Of course, you cannot move in till it does not close. But from the time it becomes firm till the final closing date, the seller is technically the housekeeper and is safeguarding the home and their money that's tied to that home till the day of closing. Next week, I'm going to discuss the process from firm 
to close and things that can go wrong and what you need to be aware of so stay tuned till then if you found value or like this video and would like to see more content click on the boxes on the screen once again my name is Preeti Rao and my contact information is in the description box below make sure to hit like share subscribe and the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos thank you so much for watching and don't forget to call me because I hold the key that opens the door to your dream home.